Corey Eliason is out at Rudine Racing, plus Brent Marks wins again in Pennsylvania. What's ahead tonight on Dirt and more? Let's go. Today is Thursday, June 30th, 2022. Welcome into Dirt Tracker Daily. I'm Justin Fiedler. We'll get to last night's action and what's ahead tonight in a bit, but we'll start off with the big news from yesterday, which was Rudine Racing announcing that after three and a half seasons together, they had parted ways this week with driver Corey Eliason. It was only a few weeks ago that I did a daily show talking about the struggles that Eliason and that team have had this year, and since then, things hadn't gotten much better. Eliason is still way down in eighth in all-star points, and the team had an abysmal weekend at Dirt Cup at Skagit last weekend where Eliason finished 23rd, 21st, and 19th. In a story from Jeremy Elliott, Eliason said that team owner Kevin Rudine called him on Monday to give him the news and that he wasn't really prepared for it to happen this week. He did indicate, though, that he thought this move might be coming. And according to Elias and Rudin did say to, uh, to him that he'd help him secure a ride in the future. Uh, but right now there is nothing to report yet on where Elias and could end up. As for the Rudin 26, supposedly the team will be in attendance next Wednesday night when the All-Stars head to Lernerville. We just don't yet know who will be driving the car. Before the season struggles, Eliason had been a yearly contender with the All-Stars, finishing third in the standings in 2019 and second in each of the past two years. Along the way, he bagged eight wins, 59 top fives, and 111 top tens in 173 races. This year, though, things were just not working. Through 27 races, the team had just five top fives and 12 top tens, and they had a lone win at East Bay early in the year. And that win actually didn't even end up helping them out in the standings because those early season races at East Bay are not for points. Their qualifying average was almost five positions worse than a year ago, and their feature finish average was two spots worse. I personally thought this team would be the ones to beat in 2021, and I figured they'd keep Sunshine honest again this year, but that did not happen. And obviously, like we talked about on that show a couple of weeks ago, getting behind early in that and qualifying and then being behind in heat races, it's so difficult these days to try to make up those huge gaps. And this team just wasn't able to do that. Behind the scenes, there were crew changes to try and fix things, but those kind of changes or to no avail, no, you know, no changes, no help, or not no changes, but changes that didn't help that led to positive change on the racetrack. And now with still half the season to go, Eliason is out and Rudine will have a new driver. It's a shame because the 26 team, uh, 26 team is definitely a premium ride and capable of competing every single night out. We've obviously seen that from Elias and uh, plenty in the past. And we know that Corey is as talented as they come in terms of a driver. You don't win with both the All-Stars and Outlaws unless you can drive a sprint car. But sometimes, uh, sometimes things just don't work out for whatever reason. I think this is one of those instances where we just the chemistry was missing. Things, you know, people weren't gelling here. Uh, you, 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 you might not be able to put your finger on why things don't work, but you know, over the course of of the history of motorsports, this has certainly happened plenty of times. And I saw a lot of people defending Elias and yesterday on social media, and some of it kind of spilled into my mentions uh, on my personal account and the Dirt Tracker account. I was a bit surprised by it because I didn't see anywhere that people were actually critical of Elias and are blaming him for the issues or that he somehow deserved this move. The defense seemed kind of a bit unnecessary, honestly. Anyone who's seen Corey race knows that he's plenty capable. Uh, but again, this is just the nature of the beast sometimes. Sometimes these things just don't work out. And obviously, Kevin Rudine felt that it was time to make a change with the driver and, you know, to hopefully improve his race team. I'm guessing we'll know fairly soon who the uh, new Rudine driver is with less than a week until they race again. As for Elias, I'm sure he'll be working the phones uh, and trying to put together rides to continue his season. Drop me a comment. Let me know what you think of this move. I think it's interesting to kind of look at the seasons 2019, you know, a couple of wins, 2020 wins, you know, finishes second to to Aaron Reitzel uh, that second year. The third year, like I said, 2021, I thought that these guys would be the favorites for the championship. They kind of got off to a slow start. They didn't win till later in the year. They were never really able to put a ton of pressure on Sunshine as he got hot into the summer last year. Uh, still ended up second in the standings, had a few wins. Uh, and coming into the season, again, I thought it would probably be those couple of guys, Sunshine and, and Elias, and at the top, obviously, Justin Peck. Uh, but that just never materialized. And, and now you've got this kind of whole other group of guys that's kind of stepped up, especially, you know, you, you look at Peck, you look at Parker Price Miller, Hunter Schoenberg, all of these other guys that have had good seasons up to this point. 
and Eliason just struggling back there in eighth. And it's, you know, it felt like this was maybe only a matter of time until some changes were made here with that 26 team, especially with, you know, what the expectations have been for these guys for the last couple of years. But sucks for everybody involved, but hopefully uh, everybody will be able to uh, come out better on the other side of this. But again, drop me a comment. Let me know what you think of these moves. In Pennsylvania last night, Pennsylvania Speed Week had a big shakeup in the week-long point standings uh, at Port Royal. Anthony Macri entered the night with a sizable lead over Brent Marks. But after an expired engine from Macri and a dominating win from Marks, the top two have flipped headed to Hagerstown. Marks ended up leading all 30 laps from the outside front row while Macri lost that engine with just nine laps remaining. He was running third at the time as well. We may have ended up with a nice battle for the win at the end too between Marks and a hard-charging Kyle Larson. But under the caution from Macri's expired engine, Larson's right rear tire started going flat. And it was then only three laps later that Young Money was out of the feature when that right rear finally went all the way down. So Marks picked up $7,000 and his second win of the week with Mike and Logan Wagner joining him on the podium. Heading to Hagerstown tonight, the gap back to Macri is 55, but there's still plenty of racing left for the Concrete Kid to make a charge back here. We have another streaming flip tonight as well. Last night was on Flow Racing. Tonight we're back on SprintCarUnlimited.tv and the pay-per-view model uh, if you want to watch the live stream. With the Summer Nationals last night at Benton uh, Speedway, uh, the Summer Nationals, Late Models, and Modified Nationals event turned into a bit of a mess. They couldn't get the track right early in the night. They were still doing track work, and you know they were stopping hot laps, and uh, eventually the series just made the call to pull the plug on the event entirely. It seems like some of the competitors, too, already had an idea this track was going to be a problem and didn't even show up. The Late Model field was only 20 cars, and the Modifieds only had 11, which didn't include Nick Hoffman. It's not uncommon for guys to take nights off, especially on the mod side, uh, and Hoffman has certainly done it in other years, but this one felt a little bit strategic. So no changes last night with no racing completed, and now they will head to Fayette County tonight. This show tonight pays 10000 to win for late models and 1500 to win for modifieds. If you can't be there, Duravision has live coverage. Uh, elsewhere last night at Atomic Speedway in Ohio, the Fast Series was in action with 410 sprint cars. The feature was marred by several early incidents that took out a bunch of cars. And it was nearly 40 minutes from the time the original green flag waved uh, until we had an official lap complete. Once rolling finally, Cole Duncan was on a mission though, and he jumped to a massive lead and started putting the field laps down. Later, with just a handful of laps left, Duncan had managed to put everyone a lap down from fifth on back, so only four cars on the lead lap. But his night did not end in victory lane. With three laps remaining, he shredded a right rear tire into turn three and was then just a passenger as his 22 car went for a big tumble. It was a brutal end following a dominant performance. The crash handed the lead to Lee Jacobs, and he held on over the final few laps to earn the $5,000 win. Kel Thomas and Nate Delsel completed the podium. The Fast Series is back in action on Sunday at Waynesfield, joined by the Boss non-wing sprint cars. With just a few days off uh, since the Firecracker 100 weekend wrapped up, the Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series is right back at it for a four-race weekend starting tonight at Florence Speedway in Kentucky. They will then head to Portsmouth in Ohio on Friday and then Muskegon County on both Saturday and Sunday. We talked earlier in the week about Tim McCready closing the gap to Brandon Shepard for the championship lead and entering tonight. It's only 25 points between the two. Behind those guys, Tyler Err, Ricky Thornton Jr., and Earl Pearson Jr. complete the top five. All of them have some work to do to get into the mix here. Lawrence has a regular stop for the Lucas Lane models, and in just the previous two seasons, uh, I have seven races in the DirtTracker.com analytics database from that racetrack. In those seven shows, we've had six different winners. Brandon Overton won two of three in 2021 with local favorite Josh Rice, the other winner. In 2020, Tim McCready, Mike Marler, Jimmy Owens, and EPJ all picked up victories. Over those seven races, though, TMAC has by far the best average finish, sitting at a very strong 3.7. That past success at Florence combined with his recent run of good races has McCready atop the win chances from the prediction formula. And I'm going to agree with that choice tonight. He, uh, and I, if you kind of go back through his past results, he's won back-to-back -back races on two different occasions in the last three seasons with Lucas, so he could definitely do that again tonight. If you can't get to Florence, you can watch it live over on Mav TV+. And if you're a big block modified fan, the Super Dirt Car Series is racing tonight at Land of Legends Raceway in Canandaigua, New York. The series raced just six days ago with Mike Mahaney coming out on top at Albany, Saratoga. Stuart Friesen had been leading the series point standings, but he didn't race last Friday as he was in the truck race at Nashville. So we had a points jumble following that event. 
Heading into tonight, Matt Williamson has taken over the top spot in the championship with Matt Shepard 25 points back in second and Max McLaughlin, Jimmy Phelps, and Anthony Perego in tow. Surprisingly, Shepard is the only driver in the top 10 in the Super Dirt Car Series standings with a series win this season. But I would guess we'll probably see that change tonight. Peter Britton is a regular at Canandaigua, and he won here last season in SDS competition. He could be a very solid choice tonight, I think. The race tonight pays $7,600 to win, and you can watch it live over on Dirt Vision. Uh, and up in Wisconsin tonight, the IRA Sprint Cars are headed to the Plymouth Dirt Track for a 5,000 to win show. This track is only five miles from Road America, which is hosting NASCAR this weekend. So hopefully some folks will get a chance to see some dirt racing before the road course fires up over the next couple of days. Jace Briscoe will be there with the Mahindra Sprint Car as part of his dirt schedule this season. Uh, if you remember, we had Chase on uh, Dirt Tracker Conversations here all uh, not all that long ago, kind of talking about his dirt season. Uh, with eight races complete for IRA, uh, Jordan Goldsberry currently leads the point standings over Jake Newman and Jake Blackhurst. Goldsberry and Newman are both seeking their first wins of the year, while Scotty Thiel is the only driver with multiple victories with the series in 2022. If you aren't nearby, tonight's IRA show can be watched live over on Flow Racing. Speaking of that streaming schedule, we've got 15 shows coming up uh, today. That includes the Summer Nationals and Super Dirt Car Series on Dirt Vision, the Lucas Light Models on MAV-TV+, Plus, PS Speed Week on SprintCarUnlimited.tv, and a whole lot more. To see the full daily streaming schedule with links to watch, visit DirtTracker.com slash watch tonight. That's it for the show today. Have a good Thursday. If you have thoughts about the topics on today's show, please leave them in the comments below or tweet at me. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. We'll see you tomorrow for more Dirt Tracker Daily.